Hello and welcome to a new video about the magnetic field. We are talking about induction. Last time we talked about induction, self-induction. Right? So, because we said it is irrelevant if a changing magnetic field, what is causing induction actually, what the origin is. And now we have another origin. We, our origin today will be motion. Look at the situation. This is what we, this is our model, right? A very usual model. It's not from the top of my head. It's a very usual model to describe this like that. We have an area with a constant flux density, magnetic flux density. This is why I made all those errors to indicate they are everywhere. This flux density is simply everywhere, same strength, everything. We have two rails. Those are conductive rails. And here we have the end. Uh, I just made this little node here uh, to indicate, okay, we have a closed loop. So we are closed here. But you see, the lower part is still the lower part and the upper part is still the upper part. Just to, to close the loop. The other closing of the loop is this rail. Yeah, This is a slider actually. This slider is touching those two rails. Is uh, electrically conductive connected and it is moving with a velocity. Say so here is a velocity. So it's sliding in this direction, direction x, starting from zero, going with a certain velocity in this in this direction. Okay. Now let's have a look at this loop here. There's a flux density, there's an area, x multiplied with L. Uh, the L is the length, the, the distance between the two rails, and x is the actual position of our, of our slider. So there is a flux. And this flux here, in this area, phi, flux phi, equals the flux density multiplied by a, the area, which is in our case the flux density multiplied by x multiplied by L, it's this area. Now let's remember the law of induction, okay? We have the same situation like always. We have here, this law of induction was minus u. Huh? Then, we had, then we had, uh, then we had, then we had i multiplied by r. And this equals minus the change rate of the flux. Actually, the flux linkage, uh, but in our case, in our case, this change of the flux equals the change of the flux linkage. Uh, why? Because n equals one. In this case, we have only one winding, right? So. What is not a change of the flux? Let's, let's note this, let's think about this. So the flux is changing, right? So what is the flux? The flux is the flux density. This is constant. Multiplied by the length L, this is constant. What actually is changing is this x. So we have here delta x. This is changing over time. And this equals, of course, the flux density multiplied by L. And since <coughs> our velocity, our velocity equals the change in position divided by the change in time. Okay, 
So the change in the change in position equals the velocity multiplied by the change in time. This is clear. Yeah. If I want to know how far I've got with a certain velocity, I have to multiply with the time I needed. And this is hopefully clear. So we have here instead of delta x, I write this velocity multiplied by delta t. And of course, this is still this delta, this here, this is still this delta phi. And then now I bring this to the other side. So I, I want to have it written that this delta phi b divided by, and now it's delta t, equals what is left on this side, the flux density, multiplied by the length, multiplied by the velocity. And now I make again this infinitesimal transition so that I think that these deltas are very small, very small, very small. Yeah? So unimaginable small, but still there. So I can write, instead of these deltas, I can think about this t, the change rate. Uh, then this, this approximation with the delta will get exact and will get the change rate. This is exactly the same. So actually what is written here, we have minus u plus i multiplied by r equals and now I will simply use this term here, but minus, of course, because we have minus here. Minus b multiplied by l multiplied by the velocity. And now there is no connection here. Huh? So we have an open loop. This is i equals zero amps. Yeah. So what is left is minus u equals minus b multiplied by l multiplied by the velocity. So I have a voltage which equals the flux density multiplied by the length of our slider, only the slider, the exposition does not really matter, yeah? and the velocity. <clears throat> and actually that's it. Huh? This is what we can earn from moving induction. This is how generators and stuff are functioning. There's a rotating part or there is a part which is moving. It's moving through a magnetic field and we will earn voltage there. We will earn voltage. Yeah? Simply followed out of the law of induction. But I can also think about, <clears throat> hey, what is if I'm here? Here, I am an electron. Let's call it an electron here. Let's imagine for a moment I'm an electron and I'm sitting on this slider here. Do I know anything about changing magnetic fields? No, this is simply too big for me. I'm a simple electron. However, I sense the magnetic field uh, because I'm moving. I'm moving with a certain velocity v, so I'm sensing a force, the so-called Lorentz force. Okay, we talked about this. Yeah? So we had the Lorentz force. What was the Lorentz force? The Lorentz force f was the charge, me as electron, I'm charged with one minus elementary charge, uh, multiplied by the velocity, 
and now we had an X product, X and the magnetic field. And now I make these little errors because now we have an X product, so we are only dealing with vectors. Okay. Let's, let's think about what is happening here. So the velocity is going in this direction. B is going in this direction. I turn the velocity into, into B, right hand screws, so charges on positive, also forces on positive, positive uh, charges will go in that direction. Forces on negative charges will go in that direction. And you see this direction is the plus side, this direction is the minus side. So you can also th think, uh, because of the Lorentz force, where is plus and where is minus. This is often really tricky. Yeah? So because of the Lorentz force, we know now the force on negative charges is in this direction, the force on positive charges is in this direction, because I have to turn V into B and right hand screw charges positive charges this direction. Right? But I'm an electron. I also don't know nothing about Lorentz force. I just feel the force. I don't know the origin. Hmm? So actually it could be a force which is which is coming from uh, an electric field. So the force F what was the force in the magnetic field? Q multiplied by E, a magnetic field, uh, electric field. I called it E dash because the electric field is, it feels like that. Yeah? And now compare those two formulas. Yeah? It looks like our magnetic field E dash equals the velocity x magnetic field magnetic flux density mm -hmm. this is the this is valid for the whole slider here because the slider is the one which is moving so actually what is the voltage of the slider if I want to write if I want to know the voltage of the slider u this would be my electric field multiplied by the length. So volt per meter multiplied per meter. So this must be the voltage between here and here. And this equals this is the this is the electric field. So we have L multiplied by velocity xp. And if I'm only interested in the absolute values, so I, I'm resolving this X product now, product now, then we have U equals L multiplied by velocity multiplied by P. And then I would have multiplied by sinus of theta, the angle between B and, and uh, velocity, but here this part, theta is 90 degree, so this is 1. I don't really have to write this. And now look at that, this formula, this formula. <laughs> It's the same. We had two different approaches, law of induction, Lorentz force, and we end up with the same formula. Hello. So now in Lorentz force, we don't even need those sliders there. We don't even need them. They are not necessary. So as soon as I'm moving a conductive material through a magnetic field with a, with a certain velocity, I have voltage between the two ends of my of my of my conductive material this is actually how all those generators and stuff work yeah we are moving conductive 
wires or staffs or however they are called in that particular machine through a magnetic field. And this is then generating voltage. Motion induction, very important uh, for our daily electricity production. Yeah. Next time we're talking also uh, about an important part about induction, but this is usually not good. Yeah, we're talking about eddy current. What eddy currents are? Why they are bad? How what to do against them? We will discuss in next video. Eddy currents. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.